G'day everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar to introduce the Landcare Farming Program and how you can get involved. I know this webinar is being joined by people from right across Australia, and I'd like to start by thanking any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are attending today. I'd like to acknowledge Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the original land carers who have continued to care for their country for millennia. Specifically, I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation in this part of Melbourne where I am, as well as the Yogara and Turrbal people of Brisbane and surrounds where Mick is based, as the traditional owners of the land from which we are presenting today and respectfully acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. As COVID has meant that we can't come together for a national land care conference this year, we're delighted to be able to um, present this uh, webinar to you as part of a series of webinars which will include topics from each of the conference streams, taking place between now and the face-to-face -face conference in August next year. As well as an introduction to the Land Care Farming Program, this webinar is to introduce the program manager, Mick Taylor, who has been a delight to work with and has come to Land Care Australia with years of experience working across NRM and agriculture, with both industry and government experience across the country, including having been a regional land care facilitator himself. I won't go into any detail about the Land Care Farming Program, as I'll leave that in Mick's capable hands, but before we get started, there's just a little bit of housekeeping to get. We'd love to read your comments and questions for Mick throughout the webinar, and we'll have some time at the end for Mick to answer as many as he can. To submit a comment or question, you need to be signed into Landcarer. And once you're in, you can then type in the comments box underneath the webinar screen. And just to note that if you're watching in full screen mode, you'll need to ex exit full screen to see the comments box below. If you're having any technical issues and you're watching in Landcarer, click on the green help button on the bottom left of your screen for live support chat. And if you're watching on the Landcare Australia website, you can email hi there, that's one word, hi there at landcarer.com. I would like to thank the Australian Government's National Land Care Program for its support of the Land Care Farming Project, which is being to get delivered together with the National Land Care Network. I'll hand you over to Mick to introduce the Land Care Farming Program. Thanks, Mick. Yeah, thanks, Rowan, uh, and, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for uh, taking the time out this morning to listen to um, our you know, great plan that we're putting together. It's, it's really exciting. Um, very excited to be a part of this project. And as Rowan mentioned, uh, I'm based up in Brisbane. I've uh, had, a, had about 15, 20 years in um, natural resource management, uh, agriculture, through a variety of different roles from policy to agro-politics to on-ground management. And um, I've uh, joined the Landcare program to, to sort of progress some of the uh, feedback I've heard around the Australia over the last 10 years about where we need to go and what we need to do and, and um, for stewardship and sustainability and uh, so this uh, program is a really good opportunity. So I'm going to run through um, around about 10 slides just talking about what we're going to do then open up with some questions at the end. Um, basically we have um, we've got a, um, a, a three-year program we're running through to 2023 we are we're funded by the Australian government, and it's a, and it's a partnership between the National Land Care Network and Land Care Australia. Um, we've got a uh, pretty clear set of um, objectives and, um, and targets to hit over the next three years, and uh, primarily we're looking to strengthen the connection of land care uh, and Australian agriculture community. So build and strengthen on what we have, uh, mature what we have, and um, provide new networks, new pathways, um, and new partnerships so that we have a, 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 a grow and strengthen our, our community across the nation and, 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 and provide really good information back out of what we do every day, back into the industry, back into the government, and uh, back to our customers and consumers. Um, We've got a long history in land care of doing this and uh, a coordinated strategy to be designed over the next 12 months will help us set a uh, pathway for the next 10, 15 years is what our ultimate game, uh, aim is. So the Landcare Farming Program, as I mentioned, it's a federally funded project. Um, we're working on setting, uh, strengthening the partnerships that we have, growing new ones and, and targeting um, opportunity to bring new people, uh, 
pay younger people, uh, uh, more recognition to what we're doing. Over the next 12 months, um, oh, sorry, over the last 12 months, we've had a steering committee of two um, NLM members, two Anchor Australia members and two farmers working as a steering group. Collectively, they are my boss. They um, basically run through developing a strategy. And over the, the last six months, I started the role in April, we've been building a strategy based on um, ways of it of improving the, the water, soil and biodiversity outcomes for Australian on, on Australian farms and providing a, 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 a more targeted way of reporting back into the government about our collective work. There's a strong belief in the industry that um, a lot of farmers don't get recognised for the good work that they're doing um, and they seem to be the, under the opinion that it stops the moment there's no fun in it. It doesn't stop, it keeps going. Uh, and there's lots of stuff happening out there. So building a strategy that sort of um, recognises the work that's underway um, and where to go in the future is our, our primary aim over the next 12 months. I'm going to walk through um, the investment strategy, what we're going to invest in in the next 12 months to, to help strengthen this strategy. But ultimately, the strategy that we want to deliver is, um, is aimed at providing on-ground practice change adoption of best practice or, or new science and testing and demonstrating it on farm for better soil water and biodiversity outcomes. So in the last 12, uh, six months we've um, spent a bit of time going through Australian agricultural industry sustainability strategies, where they are now and where they're going towards 2030. Um, and we've pulled out some common themes uh, across these strategies, uh, whether it's Australian government or industry, uh, we've working towards sustainable development goals. Um, there's some key targets that overlap. One of the things that has uh, long been a frustration of mine is across so much of agriculture, we have the same um, environment, the same substrates, the same waters, the same everything, but we report in different manners in different places in different manners um, across different industries. And uh, a lot of that reporting gets uh, scaled up or, or broad brushed into certain categories and it misses out on a lot of the really good practices, really good farming that's happening on ground. And we sort of get this broad brush response back to our um, government and government and um, consumers about what and how we do it. And um, as farmers tell me all around Australia that we do this stuff, we're doing a great job and we don't seem to be um, able to promote it as well as we can. And so the idea that we aim to is these six themes is to Basically, they tie in across everyday management of a farm, things that people do. They create a fabric underneath the projects, the investments, the monitoring, evaluation, and the, and the planning that we have in place. Um, they interface with each other. So uh, in any agricultural sector, you can find that these strengths, weakness, and opportunities in drought, carbon, uh, biodiversity, um, ground cover, or pasture, or, um, grazing pressure, and things like that, veg management, and ecosystem services and people, uh, capital, people and things like that, uh, are, are common themes. And so the idea of our strategy is to use these common themes to create a, a national platform that picks up the principles and, and themes um, from what we're doing today and what we can do, and then aligning it with the best research available to demonstrate it to our peers. Uh, one of the things that I, I really believe Lancaster has a strength in, it's a it's a human pipeline. There is such a big network of, of farmers who have common beliefs and themes about where they want to go. Be able to put the best practices and innovative practices and new practices to the test and demonstrate it through this pipeline. We've demonstrated for 30, over 30 years just how successful Lancare can do uh, adoption and promotion of things. So in the next year, we're, we're looking at um, underpinning that strategy that we have sketched out with the people who are land care, the place where they sit in the landscape, their current performance on land, um, put it into a planning program so that we've actually got some opportunity to um, move that towards actual on-ground practices and then go through the next couple of years delivering it and fine-tuning it. So by the time we get to the end of the first phase in 2023, we've got a program that uh, and a strategy that um, sings and dances and we can go back to the stakeholders and go back to the investors um, and back to our customers and consumers and uh, with a strategy to go forward and, um, and partner with them for uh, 
a solid move towards 2030 and their strategy of sustainability. Now, the first um, thing we're doing, this is underway at the moment, and there may be some people who have heard about this through the state and territory organisation, but currently um, one of the feedback we got very early on when I started was um, a lot of people aren't listening, that they're, they're not hearing what's needed at the ground level. So we've set up a, a series of um, roundtables um, for each state and territory organisation uh, around Australia. They run from state and territories uh, organisations perspective uh, facilitated by the independent facilitator and um, key stakeholders in that land care network in that particular state or territory come and we're, and we're working through a, a list of strengths, weakness, opportunities uh, and a vision for what land care looks like in five, ten years and how we can use the land care farming strategy to um, bolster those um, needs, wants, um, successes etc. Uh, at the moment we're about halfway through, we've um, got uh, three more states and territories to do. Um, New South Wales, Tasmania and Western Australia, the three remaining ones. Um, if you're keen to participate, uh, you can reach out to the state uh, and territory organisation or, or myself and um, see if there's a uh, sign up for a, um, a meeting. What we hope to do out of this, each state and territory will get a snapshot of where they believe they are and, and what they need and what their strengths are and where they want to be in a few years' time. Obviously, there's no use land care army having this great big uh, fabulous strategy that um, doesn't actually match with the, what people want to do on the ground. Um, so, so even if you know, you're a small land care group and you just you know you like killing weeds or you like um, you know, managing pests. Every single one of those um, those themes or goals tie into a pest management. There's a biodiversity outcome. There's a there's a landscape resilience outcome. There's a capacity building for people outcome. So the idea is that um, from each state level, we'll get a snapshot of what the state wants to do from, from a tiny group to the big um, incorporated groups. There's an opportunity to understand what they want to do and, and tie those to the themes. By the time we've got the whole lot done, we'll have an opportunity to pull that together into a discussion paper for the steering committee, for land care, and for the government to look at what our strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities are, and how we're going to go forward to underpin that strategy with, this, with the people at a state level and build a national strategy out of that. So, underway at the moment, and some been some uh, very lively discussions, some very good discussion, um, some lots of really good ideas. Um, learned quite a lot. I, uh, I've been to a lot of these events in the past and there's lots of butchers papers and, and um, shares um, texters and things like that this is a very different way of doing it because of the, the um, inability to travel these have all been done online and uh, have done very well it's given people opportunity to um, build a bit of capacity and as I said the feedback to date has been very good and I'm very excited to get these fit all finished so that we can have a build that final snapshot report of what Land care, uh, land care farming looks like across Australia. Now the next step, um, this is also just underway. Each state and territory organisation has got, uh, has received a um, what's, what's uh, sorry, a land care legacy kit. It's a kit made of basically a selfie frame that has some instructions and some hand wipes, so we don't um, give everyone the COVID. The idea is that we uh, take these selfie frames out into our community, into our networks, into um, where we, we deliver our land care and we promote why we do it. So my vision is to have uh, a national snapshot of land care and carers individually, land care groups, land care communities, um, what they do, what their passion for it is, why they, they're they doing it. Um, to build this snapshot of a web across Australia, all these little um, short videos. So we're asking that these um, producers and, and land care groups to take two minute videos, tell us about their passion and why, where and what they do in land care. Uh, we're going to sort of um, spread that across Australia so we can show to the government, to the industry, just how broad uh, our network is and how much we're, we're doing. That land care is something we do every day. Uh, it's not something that turns up and leaves when the funding does it. It's a part of our life. This this um, idea came out of a discussion with some people in Dairy Australia who were telling me about work they did as kids or their parents did with land care and they drive 
they weren't particularly taken with the idea as kids, but as they drive back into the farm each day now, they see the value of that 20, 30 years of um, restoration and repair work that Landcare ethic uh, or ethos had, had created on that farm and they're so proud of it. Um, you remember back to the days where quite a few, nearly a decade ago, where we had the light, Landcare is for everyone, cartoon video that was on TV. It was quite um, well received. My vision out of these, um, my legacy is to create almost a human version of that instead of cartoon figures. We're showing tangible benefits of what the Landcare Network's been doing, uh, snapshots around Australia from this process where we do the, the um, what's my legacy, all the way through to picking the winners for the better ones, the, the ones that are a startling story, uh, the funny ones, the oldest, the youngest, the uh, things like that and create uh, a campaign that really promotes the on-ground act activities or what we're doing every day for biodiversity, soil and and, um, and um, water quality. Now, these kids are out, as I mentioned, if uh, your SCOs ran out of them, they're already in motion. We, we're trying to use them like a message stick so they do move around the landscape. Um, if you can't get one off your SCO, you can email me on that address at the bottom of the screen and I can send you one. So the other part we're doing, now this is the quite an exciting part of the project, we're just in the final throes of putting uh, together an expression of interest that's going to be sent out shortly to uh, around Australia. Our vision is to get um, 500 um, producers to create an, a carbon or a, an environmental footprint using either natural capital accounting or, or carbon methodology. Um, our aim is to put um, uh, 25 workshops to do environmental footprint and 25 workshops to do a carbon footprint uh, around Australia. Each workshop will have uh, uh, 10 producers and, and some support um, where they can actually develop what it looks like on their individual property. And again, just like we did in the round tables, we will um, we'll aggregate that at, 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 a, at, a, at a group level and find out what a, a common theme is. So for example, you could be somewhere up in Emerald or or down in the Gippsland or, or across down near Denmark somewhere. Um, you and, and nine or 10 of your mates get together and you're, you're working the group and find out what your individual um, footprint is. And then you aggregate that with help of the, um, the process to end up what that snapshot is for your group. Now, that, that snapshot is going to bring out the strengths, weakness, opportunities and threats to address certain elements that build resilience, that uh, address ground, ground cover, um, drought resilience, build drought resilience, uh, build people capacity. Again, it, it's the strengths and weakness and opportunities that are on the tangible on ground things that we can identify in this workshop that align to those six themes um, is how we set the, uh, the framework or the bones that holds the land care strategy together as it evolves out of this planning phase. So, so far we've got the people um, from my legacy, we've got the performance you know, what are we actually going to work on um, and uh, that the next thing that we're going to do when all this comes together we'll build um, a series of, of hubs I guess is how I see it going you know, it still depends what comes out of the groups but the vision is that out of these um, benchmarks uh, uh, we find out across the state that there's um, a really good opportunity for this hub to um, to to demonstrate some new pastures or some new species or to um, address some soil amelioration um, um, problems with, with some sort of different science and different practices. Um, we use these as demonstration sites and then there, our network of, of land carers and P2P learning has the opportunity there to sort of promote that further. So, so that's, that's the plan for the next 12 months to get a strategy. It's when we aggregate this at the end of 2022, 23, we're starting to know what it looks like. We then go back to the, to the organisations, back to the roundtable process again, and, and, and design what our, our overarching 2030 vision is and how we're going to achieve it. We then have a, a demonstrated set of um, practices and performances, and, um, monitoring, evaluation, communication, and engagement that we can then go back to the industries and say, this is how we're going to do it. Um, this is how we're going to get X amount of producers into a carbon neutral. This is how we're going to build natural capital. This is how we're going to address drought. Um, and we're doing it as one voice uh, with one metrics to record that. So that's where we're hoping to go uh, after the 12 months. So at the moment, 
this is uh, the second last slide. Um, just in the design phase at the moment, looking at the people. This is the round table that I mentioned. The place. This is looking at my legacy. Why I sit in the landscape where I am. What makes me passionate about it. Why I'm a good steward of it, and what I see in the future. Um, it's a very powerful piece of information to have that many people around Australia telling us their story and what, and what they're doing. And then we're going to underpin that with the benchmarking workshops. I mean, 500 uh, snapshots around Australia in, in groups of 10 uh, on common themes. That provides a really powerful piece of information to say, this is where we need to be spending our investment. My role then will be to be the conduit between the research, the RDCs, um, the best practices, and setting up demonstration sites and trials um, and tools and communication packages um, to help uh, producers participate in it, but also to help other producers to learn about it. I'm a firm believer that the best way of getting farmers to understand new concepts or to, to try new things is peer-to-peer -peer learning. One of the big things I heard regularly in my last uh, role with me last I could show you was, Oh, that's fabulous research and if I live next door or within 100 kilometres, that would be great, but I don't, I live over here. And that's why I find the opportunity of the land care network is broad and established as it is to pick up research that's available, that comes out as proof of concept and then use it against our strengths, weaknesses and opportunities that we've identified through those um, steps and pathways I've identified above. We end up with a really strong um, platform to um, move indicators forward and, and move practice forward and actually measure that, that change to promote the work that we're doing. So the last the last slide is um, um, providing, it's got some links now. This Don't panic too much. This, this will be sent around um, um, post webinar to have a look at, but we've got the Landcare webpage up at the moment and it's, it's in its early stages, but it's, it's looking pretty good. We've got stuff about the themes, we've got stuff about the, the, some pieces we're trying to do. Largely, it covers off what I've spoken about here today and a little bit more stuff. The other one that's in there at the moment, and, and this uh, has already created quite a bit of interest, is Meter Landcare Farmer. Um, there's an opportunity there. This will tie into the legacy project, but ultimately, there's an opportunity there to, if you know a farmer that's doing a really good job, and they are, at the, the, the leaders or the doing stuff that's uh, really innovative for the opportunity here to put them up and promote what they're doing. There's a little template you go to, you fill it out. Um, and what that does, that 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 makes us aware, it makes me aware, oh, I obviously don't know that many people around Australia. So the more people I know and can find out what they're doing, the more I can string them together to help create a fabric of, of um, a continuity between what we're doing and then promote that back out so it, it's an entry level start to what we're doing in our monitoring evaluation uh, we quite regularly hear that there's so much stuff done, done around the landscape but we measure all different things and it's hard for the industry to understand the impact we're actually having if we're all measuring different things so there's a few steps that we'll have over the, the obviously the projects i've just spoken about um through meet my farmer meet a farmer and different participation levels where we have that com common matrix underneath it so that we actually start to promote the scale and capacity of what we're doing, whether it's in a project or in day-to-day -day activities so we can show the scale of our works. Next one down there is uh, webinars. Obviously, you can work that one out because you're here today. Um, there's going to be a series of webinars that come out around the conference this day, but there's also going to be uh, a series of um, an ongoing series of webinars that come out of the land care farming program. We're going to align them to the six themes that I mentioned earlier. And as you go through, we find the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities of those environmental um, processes uh, and practices that we've identified through the projects. Our idea is to bring in the industry leaders, the latest research, the new tools, new bits and pieces, and run regular webinars about how we address those things and also how. Um, what other groups are doing as well. So we'll have interviews, we'll have panels, we'll have um, promotion of latest research and things like that. So um, if you if you haven't signed up already, you can get onto the Landcare Farming page and sign up. Uh, regular feedback will come out about when the next webinars are, um, things about local farmers, things about the legacy stuff uh, and expressions of interest and opportunities to participate will be made available through Landcare. Uh, um, 
pretty regularly as they come available. So it's a pretty important um, couple of links there, and uh, I'd love to get your feedback. Like I said, I've never done a website before, and um, Landcare Comms team probably wish I hadn't done one because it was a, a pretty new experience for an old fella. Uh, but it's come up all right, and we're we're really um, quite stoked about this. So have a look at it, and I'd love to hear your feedback about it. I'd love to see um, people joining into the land care community and sharing stuff. Um, remember with the, the opportunity to promote what your projects are and what your passions are at a grassroots level. Uh, I can promote that at a national scale, um, along with others on Common Matrix, we end up with a really powerful statement. So that's the last slide. Um, my details are there. Uh, I, I said uh, I haven't bored you too much. Um, it's a very exciting project. Uh, I think um, the more people we can get involved, uh, the better. And um, I look forward to hearing your feedback. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mick. That's great. Just just like to say that it's been incredibly encouraging the support that we're seeing from grassroots land carers across the country, as well as um, industry and, and government interest in the program, even in its early stages. And and thank you, especially to the National Land Care Network and, and the support that the state and territory land care organisations are providing to, to seeing this program get up and, and you know, be really successful. We've got a few questions that have come through on land care. So just a, a reminder, if you're logged into land care, but you can't see those questions to, to get out of full screen and then there'll be a box there below. Um, I'll start with this one, Mick, which is about the legacy campaign from Karen. Just a quick one. When do you need those oh, two minutes? Good question. So we've started off now and we've sort of been sort of a bit of a soft start to make sure everything worked. We're not, the idea was that by the time we get to the conference next year, and obviously the conference is keeping moving along a little bit, um, we're going to aim to have announced some winners or some, um, some awards for the better ones and the, the younger ones and the funny ones and things like that. So we're gonna run the strategy through to the next conference, but we're gonna do it in a couple of bands. So the first bit, an hour to, to, to get something started and then uh, so by Christmas uh, I, I um, will do a first thing or a bit of a promo about what's coming before Christmas and we'll do a run-up to Easter and then we'll do a run-up to the next conference. We're doing it in a couple of phases so you've got a bit of time to um, to, to practice and and, um, and get it right. Um, you've got a bit of time to put a couple up if you've got different areas and different um, things so no, no great uh, rush but I'd like to see, we've, we've made a target of getting 250. My vision is a, is a map of Australia that's got um, little um, videos all over of what we're doing and that becomes a very powerful promotion to the industry and government. So um, earlier the better, um, but not too late. Thanks, Mick. There's another couple here about uh, regional agricultural land care facilitators or RALFs. First one, all the tide is where do you see the Ralph networks and individual Ralphs fitting with the initiative? And then a specific one from the up top end at Cape York. Can we be included in Cape York as well? We don't even know if our Ralph has funding. So it's touchy on the Ralphs, but also um, how Ralphs and Landcare groups of facilitators can access funding. All right. So I see um, I see Ralphs and, and facilitators as, as key to the delivery of this. I mean, you're on ground. I, I, there's one person sitting in this little office in Brisbane here. Um, you are my ears and, and feet on the ground. Um, I'd love to see full participation where we, 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 um, having been a, a regional land care facilitator nearly a decade ago, I, I, um, I know the trials and tribulations of it. I, uh, I have heard regularly across Australia that some people have never heard from their RELF, some didn't know they had one, and I hear other people say that their RELFs are just absolutely essential to their everyday part of their life, and that, that's how I would like to see them too. Um, one of the things I, I have pitched to the RELF leadership team uh, in Canberra was the idea of um, having those guys participate almost as a steering group for certain components or participate in the um, feedback into what we're doing and also to, to help drive the land care legacy stuff. Um, I don't see any reason why um, any of these workshops or, or um, round tables or things that we're doing in the early phase um, cannot be um, supported, used or engaged with from those at that end. The other side of it is once we start getting to that stage, I think that network will be paramount for making sure that the demonstration sites, the, um, the communication 
of what we're doing goes out to their networks. But most importantly, um, from their network back into me, we've got a, a national um, voice here that we can share what we're doing, um, the opportunity to put information up about your projects, your, your successes, your failures and all that, and, and let us help us, let us help you promote that beyond your, your normal network is very powerful. I, I see that as a primary role of me. If you're having success in projects or you're having uh, issues, there's probably somebody out there who, who's already done that and that land care reform is where I want to use that to um, make sure that there's a melding of those uh, thinking. So um, I join in. Um, I'm quite happy. I, one of the ideas I'd actually pitch was putting uh, actually a land care um, page on the, on the sustainable on our um, land care site, land care farming site, so that they can have a, a free and open conversation with what's going on and be aware as it happens. But I'm open, open book, happy to and totally fully supported well, um, working with you, that network. Got another one here from Andrea asking, is the aim of the project to promote farmer best practice environmentally or agriculturally across Australia? Yeah, good, good question. I. Um, I, it's the right best practice. I, I don't see a difference between environmental or agriculture. I think it's the same thing. Best practice agriculture gives you an environmental outcome across Australia. Um, we know that there's a lot of fabulous research out there that isn't being adopted. You know, there's a lot of um, opportunity there. There's some research out recently that's saying only around about 30, 40 percent of the uh, agricultural industries working at best practice, maybe a little bit more depending on what industry you're in. So. I guess from my role, it's to demonstrate uh, the most the best practice for the for your business, your landscape. Um, the, the reason I like the idea of using natural capital assessment style um, benchmarking is uh, it, you can get an you can demonstrate an environmental outcome or an agricultural productivity outcome using a common set of matrix, uh, and I think that's a very powerful way to go, and it's a very um, a very good way to underpin a national program with that common industry. So uh, environmentally, those six themes create agricultural productivity. Agriculturally, those six themes create environmental outcomes. Well, while we're on those six themes, the question here about um, asking why they don't mention water or regenerative ag or weeds. Um, why, why did you land on those six themes? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, six themes, um, they, they're tied to the, um, as I said in the, in the presentation, we went through the sustainability strategies of um, major industry, um, their vision for 2030, where they're going, and those themes came out consistently uh, uh, across those. Um, whether you're talking about vegetation, you're talking about pasture management, you're talking about um, carbon, um, you, you are talking about pests and you are talking about weeds, you're talking about managing or maximising those components of your business uh, at an optimum amount and um, no one makes money with weeds, so the opportunity if you're, if you're maximising uh, those themes. They're broad enough that you can fit anything within, um, anything in the, in the current farm today under those themes and then link them to the other five. Uh, um, Behind that, behind that, we're working on a sense, a set of principles that sort of link, well, what does best practice in that space to do, um, and they, was how, what would I need to do to be um, achieving the best I can for biodiversity? What do I need to do the best I can for ground cover? Um, so, so the idea of principles is to help that. Again, there's nothing new in it. This is this is just 101 farming. It's just making sure that everyone has access to the latest uh, and most valuable information their particular land site. The reason I don't go into, it doesn't say anything about regenerative, um, a regenerative um, ag is um, every one of those principles that, uh, sorry, every one of those themes that we've put up, it, it's established in mainframe agricultural reporting strategies. Um, how you achieve them, it doesn't matter. Everything, whether it's regenerative or, or, or standard practice, there's scientific principle behind it. Um, using natural capital again as an example, changing practice on farm, if you can add or, or improve your productivity in any manner you like, um, you're going up, you're improving your soil, you're improving your water. It doesn't matter how you improve it as long as you are moving away or maintaining the benchmark you've created. So I, I, I don't want to, um, the, the term regenerative, 
is, is quite divisive um, in industry circles, and I don't want to be in that space. What we've got is a network of farmers who are, uh, who are passionate about environmental and agricultural outcomes and to use whatever method they deem fit to, to promote those soil, water, biodiversity outcomes under those six themes uh, is fine by me. As I said, it's covered, it's, there's nothing in, I've seen in any of the articles or processes that isn't scientifically based. Uh, if you choose to choose one practice over another, that's for your business, simple as that. Um, here's a perennial question. We need funding consistency and facilitators on ground to help us. Are there funds within the Landcare Farming Program to help support this? Yeah, good question. This one hasn't come up in the past much. Uh, uh, I guess if for the amount of funding we've got under the Landcare Farming Program, um, it would basically mean everybody got basically enough to buy half a day of a facilitator. There's just not enough money in it. Um, having said that, in the industries that I've worked in in the last five years, it's been millions and millions of dollars spent on research and development um, and adoption of those practices isn't particularly um, well followed through with. It's a common thing, adoption of best practice, adoption of your research, it lags the research. Uh, a lot of the major industries and RDCs uh, recognise this and they're working towards it. So whilst we're saying, is there money available in this program? Probably not enough to make any meaningful difference. I think the value that we have in this program is to develop a, develop a strategy that brings all land carers into a common voice uh, with some common measurements and some common practices using um, that, that network capacity that we have and demonstrate the value of what we can do. And then I think the funds will flow from other areas. Um, the idea of putting this next year together to build that strategy and then tie uh, co-funded projects together to, to do that uh, at, a, at a regional or a grassroots level uh, is the first step in that process. So we're taking the approach that uh, this is a design and development and, um, and refinement stage and the funds will come um, as the work comes and we demonstrate we've got the capacity to deliver in a meaningful scale. Uh, and further to the facilitator question, I suppose facilitator and facilitator groups, uh, this is a common problem. One of the big challenges for land care groups is developing applications and if successful, managing administration reporting and evaluation, especially groups made up of volunteers. Is there any scope within the land care farming program to better support groups in this space? Yeah, too, right. That's a good question. This is one, so I hear this every day. Um, and it, it's, it's uh, one that's very much on my mind. If you have a look through the website, we're after to design a project part on our land care farming website. That's the opportunity we're going to develop some baseline templates and some um, support um, products to help people put together a reporting or, a, or an application or the things that they need to get going. Um, I am here available to help people with projects and get them uh, uh, into bits and pieces that, that will help them do that. The idea of having the templates it means uh, we can help administer that. It gives us the pathway to um, get some consistency in the data and take the pressure off the volunteer groups. And also it gives the opportunity to sort of align common themes. So uh, very much a part of it, but the, the, the templates are in uh, very early stages at the moment, but the opportunity will be very much to do that. Uh, I understand that the difficulty, uh, and I'd love to hear um, from groups as we evolve this to how we can do it. One of the things that I'd really like, to, we've just done a, um, a joint application with, uh, across all states and territories with the, uh, some drought funding. Um, so we're going to be doing quite a bit of that work at, at a STO slash um, care farming program to to bring funds into the to the states in that manner. But I'm also very happy to work with groups individually to um, help align on on common themes. So that's what we're hoping to get out of the um, the benchmarking is common themes it's across multiple landscapes that we can then write bigger applications that can be managed by one or two people with enough scale and scope to put facilitators in place. But again, my details are there and I'm happy to talk through that. Uh, we've got one here from, from Jenny who says, there are a number of groups and organisations already working on benchmarking natural capital in their landscapes. How will you avoid a duplication of what has already been done? Um, I, I think 
hats off to them if they've done some benchmarking. Um, I, I think it, it ties in beautifully with what we're doing. I don't see it as a, as a duplication. I see it as a value add, um, particularly if they're in land care groups and they're away. They can um, slot straight into what we're planning. They, they've already got a, a key in the door. To me, I, I think um, it, it really does add value um, and, and expands the footprint of what we're trying to do in this first phase. Uh, I don't see any matter why it wouldn't tie directly into our, our next stage of, of demonstrating um, amelioration or, or, or adjustment to the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities that they identify. And one here from Andrea. Is Landcare Farming Program wanting to encourage practice change amongst the approximately 60 or 70 not percent not at best practice yet? Yeah, I'd, <laughs> that'd be a lovely outcome, but I, I'd, um, the way that I look at industry, you've got 10% of industry that's dragging um, the industry along. They're, they're, they're cutting edge, they're doing great stuff. You've got the next 10% that are the early adopters. Down the bottom, you've probably got a 10% that you know, they, they've heard it before, they, they're not interested, and, and we've probably all worked with some of those guys, and that's fine. You know, that's, they're probably doing a great job and they just want to be left alone, they don't need to participate. But I really believe in the middle, there's a band of probably 60 or 70 percent of producers in that middle spot that um, have the potential and the will to, to um, be aware of it. What I hear constantly is there's so much information, there's such an oversupply that they don't know where to start, that they don't know what to do. And the whole idea between what we're trying to achieve here is create um, a set of key issues that we can identify, find the research for it make the information really easily available and become the, uh, the go-to place for the latest information that helps me adjust that problem. Um, I've, I've been in, in a lot of um, RDCs, that the cupboards are just full of fabulous research, but people don't know where to, to start looking. They don't know if it's the right thing for their space. So um, I think that's our value add. We, we can find out what's needed at the grassroots and then provide the access to the, to the experts and the information, the research, um, to, to address those problems and, and where they need to go beyond proof of concept, it's a walk-up start for our groups to then demonstrate it on site and trial it or expand its range from proof of concept at a, at a research station into broader landscape scales. So I don't think you'll ever get, um, having worked in the space a bit, I don't think you're ever going to get that 70% totally, but to make sure that people, I think my duty of care is to make sure people are aware of what's available and the impact of it, um, both positive and negative, and, and if they can participate or, or willingness to participate, um, I've, I've got the skills and, and the, and the um, network to help them achieve that. We've got time for one very quick answer now, Mick. Um, uh, where are we? We need one land care voice, not multiple. How does the land care farming program help us achieve this? I believe the land. I believe that's my core role, is to have you guys send me on the ground what's happening in your place, and I promote it out. I find out the latest research that ties into things that you're finding, or, or expand on what you're finding, and then push that information back into the network. When it comes down to the other entities, uh, we hear all the time that people want one voice. I think this is a pretty good starting point for farmers on ground who want to be heard uh, and, and recognised for what they're doing and also be able to have access to a single point of information. All right, well, I think we're getting the wrap up there. So thank you very much, Mick, for the introduction to the Landcare Farming Program. And thank you also to everyone who attended or registered for today. We'll be circulating an email this afternoon with a link to the recording of the session and some more information about how you can get updates from the Landcare Farming Program. In the meantime, if you haven't already, can I encourage you to sign up to the Landcare Farming Community on Landcare. That link will be sent out with that email this afternoon. And uh, keep an eye out on Landcare Australia's social channels and newsletters for news of more of the Landcare Conference webinars.